It was a place where a man could start over, where a fortune could be made. They say every town has a story. Tombstone has a legend. Who is he? That's Wider. Better name for himself as a peace officer. I heard of you. I'm retired. You must be Doc Holliday. You retired too? Not me. I'm in my prime. Hollywood Pictures presents. The only real law around here is the Cowboys. The story of Wyatt Earp. The first time in our lives we got a chance to stop wandering and finally be a family. Now this is trouble we don't need. If we're gonna have a future in this town, it's gotta have some law and order. What do you want, Ringo? I want your blood. I want your soul. I want them both right now. They shot your brother. Now the time has come for justice. Yes, maybe you better swear me in. And he has to live up to his reputation. You got a fight coming. I'll be there! One last time. None of your problem, Doc. You don't have to mix up in this. That is a hell of a thing for you to say to me. In a battle. The last charge of Wyatt Earp and his immortals. At the OK Corral. Oh, my God. The West would never forget. Kurt Russell, Val Kilmer, Dana Delaney, Powers Booth, Michael Bean, Bill Paxton, Jason Priestley, Sam Elliott, and Charlton Heston. You tell him I'm coming, and hell's coming with me! Justice is coming to Tombstone. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Late to the Party, where we review movies that are at least 10 years old and kind of give a fresh take on it and see if these things still hold up over time. Uh, this last week, we had the enormous privilege of your all welcome for viewing the movie that came out during the year of our graduation, 1993's Tombstone. Uh, this, movie, block. <laughs> this movie, <clears throat> uh, which is rated R, I guess, for lots of shooting and blood, because I didn't see uh, any boobies in it. Uh, but this movie was directed officially by George Cosmatos, who is uh, also famous for directing uh, Rambo, First Blood, Part Two, and Cobra. Uh, but uh, he was only officially the director. Word on the street is, is that Kurt Russell was actually doing most of the directing behind the scenes, uh, being that he was friends with the original director who got uh, fired for being behind schedule. Uh, anyway, uh, this movie started a large cast of uh, stars, much like our last uh, Western movie, Silverado. Uh, with Kurt Russell as Wyatt Earp, Sam Elliott as Virgil Earp, Bill Paxton as Morgan Earp, Val Kilmer in probably his best role ever as Doc Holliday, Powers Booth as Curly Bill Brosis, Michael Bain as Johnny Ringo, Stephen Lang as Ike Clanton, Thomas Hayden Church as Billy Clanton, Jason Priestley as Billy Breckenridge, Michael Rooker as Sherman McMasters, Dana Delaney as Josephine Marcus, Billy Zane as Mr. Fabian, Billy Bob Thornton as Johnny Tyler, Terry O'Quinn as Mayor John Clum, and of course, Charlton Heston as Henry Hooker. Uh, the movie has a, for some reason, very low rating on IMDb at 7.8 out of 10, has a 94% audience score on Rotten Tomatoes, and a well-deserved 4.7 out of 5 on Walmart.com. Uh, the movie had a budget of $25 million and made $73.2 million at the box office. So I, you could say that that's kind of a moderate success, not a huge success. And for those of you that haven't seen it, uh, the official synopsis is that this is about uh, Wyatt Earp and his brothers Morgan and Virgil, who have left their gunslinger ways behind them to settle down and start a business in the town of Tombstone, Arizona. And while they uh, aren't looking to find trouble, trouble soon finds them when they become targets of the ruthless cowboy gang. 
And now together with Do uh, with Wyatt's best friend, Doc Holliday, the brothers pick up their guns once more to restore order to a lawless land. So I'm assuming everybody's already seen this movie. Yeah. Anybody who hasn't seen the movie? Jose, that was my first time. In his head, he hasn't seen it. Are you serious? It's Jose. Come on. Come Jose. on, dude. Just, you, you, could, you could start a whole channel off of the movies I've watched. <clears throat> Yeah. Well, this then, is why we started the channel. Yeah. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Jose, why don't you start us off uh, by giving us uh, your uh, general impressions of the film? Well, I was very disappointed that I didn't see The Undertaker <laughs> once. Um, I, was I was expecting him to rise up and... I was like, I didn't see anybody get pile drive. I didn't see anybody get tombstone. It was very misleading. Um, all in all, though, it was actually pretty cool. Um, I am. Did we lose him? No, he paused. He, his he pulled the elbow on us. Yeah. No, <laughs> I'm going now. Yeah, you know, I had to uh, quiet on the set. Um, Anyways, uh, overall, um, I enjoyed it. Uh, I really thought that uh, Val Kilmer <laughs> did like, I, I was actually really blown away by his performance more than anybody's. Um, I really like Kurt Russell. Uh, it was different. So it was a refreshing to like see him in uh, 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 different movies and what I'm used to. Like uh, I came to know Kurt Russell with Escape from New York, uh, Snake Plissken. So it's a whole different vibe to see them uh, now that we've seen some really, really good Westerns, it's like kind of seeing the different actors and their different takes on it. Um, uh, the whole uh, shooting at the OK Corral is something that I've heard over and over. I didn't realize that it was actually like a real thing. And this was like an, an interpretation or like a recreation or whatever. Um, that was pretty cool. Uh, but all in all, it was it was it was uh, uh, it was pretty dope. I liked it. This, uh, th that's one of the things that uh, a lot of folks don't uh, realize that there have been about a dozen films, uh, Westerns done about uh, Wyatt Earp and, and his friends at the OK Corral there in Tombstone. This one is regarded by most to be the closest to what actually happened in history. So when you're watching this film, except for some minor side details about, you know, when the Earps got to town and when they were deputized and that sort of thing, everything else is pretty much right out of the, the pages of history, including, uh, including the famous gunfight at Iron Creek where uh, Wyatt just wades into the middle and uh, doesn't get shot at all. Some kind of flaming miracle. Well, what I wanted to do is ask everybody uh, like the same question for this first round. And uh, we'll go ahead and start with Nate. Except for uh, Wyatt and Doc Holliday, what other character in this movie stood out to you? Oh, wow. So you're removing the... Uh, you're removing the two the stars. <laughs> okay um well let's see i i i did get left i've seen this movie many times this is a a, a staple in our household actually just for me because my wife was like what are you watching what is this i'm like you haven't seen tombstone i was uh -huh. like give, give me the ring back god damn it <laughs> 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 but uh you know, they they touch on his falling out with his with his wife. How she's a, a junkie. Big, yeah, she's a junkie. She's you know an opium addict and looking for laudanum and just uh, it was pretty rough back in those days. It was almost like a cough syrup. The laudanum was, and uh, people could get like smacked out off of it. Um, I thought that uh, they're. It was an, it was an interesting part of the, of the movie, and it was also it wasn't a secret amongst the uh, the Earp brothers that that Wyatt was kind of a playboy. So, aside from just uh, his infatuation with uh, Dana Delaney's character, and uh, you know, it seemed like he he genuinely cared for his wife, but she was too uh, too cracked out to yeah, she was too cracked out to pay too much attention to and it seemed like uh from what i read she died soon after yeah the uh i think i think they left a year of you. yeah so you you appreciated her role in the movie and their dynamic together 
I mean, it was just something that, that I that I that I was trying to pay a lot of attention to. Just uh, Kurt Russell and Val Kilmer in this movie are so they catch such a huge shadow that you know it's hard not to uh, have them be the focus of what you're looking at. Now, there's you know the ob the uh, the other Herb brothers are pretty obvious as far as. Um, for instance, what you had mentioned when you were introducing the movie, how the Earp brothers were had reputations as gunslingers. The other brothers didn't really hadn't done anything. It was just Wyatt who, who was there. And as far as I know, historically, his brothers didn't they had never killed anybody or anything like that before. So. No, but but the, but Virgil and uh, a couple of other brothers that did not appear in this movie uh, were also serving as lawmen. So the the streak of being lawmen and you know gunslingers did run in the family but Wyatt was the only one who had a reputation for uh causing a ruckus causing a ruckus or being a badass because everywhere depends he went, on which way you look at it depends on which way him. you look at it yeah which side of the law are you on <laughs> <laughs> all right uh isaac how about you what who what character stands out well, for you anytime besides? i seem sam elliott in any film regardless if it's a a, a movie or a, a cartoon when you hear that voice you're just like fuck dude that guy's got that voice that the dude he narrates the dude's story he's he was in a fucking he was in a cartoon called the back backyards or backyard games or something and he narrated not that. only is he the star but his mustache is a star and too. his mustache is always on point <laughs> and it makes me want a mustache like then i can never my mustache is very untamed and i I hope to one day be the old man with that, that white mustache, because that that mustache it calls for respect. <laughs> but yeah, Virgil, <laughs> Virgil's the one who sets it all off in that town and gets them wrangled back up into that mess. Yeah. If it wasn't for him, who knows what would have happened if he didn't become a lawman? Would they have still been able to like just do their own thing and not get wrapped up in it? But that's I feel that's where it all started and what brought them on their downfall yeah in, in the movie they really play off of his uh his sense of moral conviction that yeah really draws everybody into the into the conflict yeah he becomes like the moral compass of the the brothers and like right there bill paxton's that brother like i have to join my brother and he's like son of a bitch i have to join my brothers too then <laughs> it's just like, dude, we're, we're they're all planning on getting homes and having pool tables in their homes, and it's just like, now that's out the window. Now we're gonna have targets on our back against so again, gang of cowboys, right? right. Yeah, Jason, how about you? Um, is it Curly Bill? I believe, oh, yeah, Power Powers Booth, yeah, exactly. Um, he uh, he he kept captured like the whole uh one note villain thing pretty good you know mustache twirling bad guy i thought he did a good job um selling it he didn't he didn't feel too cartoony but he was pretty cartoony so i i really liked him as a as your as your main bad guy um i think i think the whole movie was pretty well cast though i didn't get too many glaring uh <laughs> too too many poor performances let's say but um yeah he stood out for sure i'm curious were there any performances that you did uh, regard as poor uh i didn't care for the wives the three three <laughs> sister wives or whatever the hell they were <laughs> didn't stand apart from each other at all it, also at the very beginning there's like a mexican mariachi band that whole fucking intro scene, pardon my language, was fucking awful. Um, where they roll into town and start start shooting up the wedding, it felt so like, oh, these are bad guys. Look, they're they're kicking a dog. They're, you know, like they're really like you, these these are empathetic people. Like it, I Don't was forget about the priest. Hard. I was gonna say the priest gets, gets shot in the head. <laughs> Oh, wow! <laughs> they snatched the bride from her wedding and then went and oh, yeah, her they in all, the back. Yeah, they all take her to the back and 
do what bad men do. <laughs> it well, was... you know the uh, the official director uh, Cosmatos. He's um, he's also an Italian, ironically enough. So you kind of see this like this flavor that you have with these westerns, where these Italian directors come out of the woodwork uh, to do these these movies about the American West, and he wanted to pay a lot of attention to like the the details making sure that everything fit with the time frame that it was supposed to be set in but he also wanted to accentuate the the differences between the good guys and the bad guys and i have a feeling that 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 intro scene is probably more his doing than than what the rest of the film contains because you're right it does feel a little bit off definitely you know that actually makes sense for me. i was i was thinking about that i didn't realize this was done by multiple directors or whatever um but I was going to say something about how the movie felt very uh, split up. It didn't feel like completely cohesive. And that's probably exactly why. So that makes a lot of sense. Jose, how about you? Since you're taking away uh, <clears throat> Val Kilmer, <laughs> I'm going to say, uh, what's it, Johnny Ringo? Oh, yeah. For the, Michael for the reason of that one brilliant fucking scene when they first meet and it has everything like uh uh what is it hitchcock that says if the if the director shows you a bomb it's it's gonna go off or is it a gun it's gonna go off in the way that that gun's underneath uh what's his name uh uh the table yeah um but that exchange with uh with uh between him and doc holiday where he's just like you retired too and you know everything that's going on with Doc and the way he answers, he says, nope, I'm in my prime. And he looks like death. And he's like, you sure look the part. And it's just a, <laughs> that whole like like back and forth was so dope. Um, so, and, and I was like, oh my God, dude, like this whole scene was so like, uh, uh, it was so well crafted. Um, but I did also, also want to touch on like uh, the whole detail thing that you were talking about, wanting to get those details right. And in the past, I've talked about how directors use silence. Um, and in this, it's like, it's not necessarily si silence, but it's just like the noises of like the Wild West, like the, uh, the horses trot, the, the, you know, the, the sounds that the horses make as they're walking, the, the carriages, the people in, in that scene when they're all talking in the background, like the, the, like all of it, man, it was, it wasn't necessarily silence, but it was like, there was no background music going on and you just got to hear the people, you got to hear the life. So that, that whole scene is uh, and that exchange between those two dudes is probably the best thing. One one of my favorites in the movie. Mm. Um, Liz. Huh. Favorite character that's not Wyatt or Doc. And not any of the ones that the guys mentioned. Well, I mean, if, if <laughs> no. you just want to throw no, on you know what? those. Um, it's, well, I mean, they're all, like, the, all the characters, I think, have been cast very well. I mean, the the wives don't have much of the story in this. <laughs> They're just kind of there to to prove the point that they're supposed to be family men now. <laughs> I think it's like their whole like situation. But um, <laughs> I like all the other little secondary characters on this side that you just see momentarily, but you don't realize how much of an import they have. Like, um, you know, Billy Zane, he's only in what, like, two or three scenes mm -hmm. but when he's in those scenes you believe he's the this you know actor and he's a thespian yeah and then uh i think it was interesting to show what this is before the age of uh of wokeness or whatever but there's there's an implied relationship between billy zane and jason priestley's character that and all it took was just him reaching into the carriage and touching his hand and it explained everything. I mean, this like there's just that character and aspect to it. There's the all of the other cowboys that you see. Um but is it McMasters? Is that Rook Rooker's character? Yeah, Sherman McMasters. To see how he goes from Which being incidentally one of those... is a badass name. It's like who who's that guy? That's Sherman McMasters. <laughs> <laughs> it's it was cool to see his character go from being a you know he was supposed to be part of this badass cowboy gang, but then he he has a moral compass too, to some degree. You can see he, he was them. disgusted at the wedding because he was yeah he, he was wasn't with them at that, that wedding. He, he wasn't about that. The fact that they went after the women, and there's a scene that's cut because we watched the uncut 
version of it. There's actually like an extended edition of it where he goes and he um, confronts Ringo. And that's, you see what happens there. And that's what leads to him getting dragged back behind the horse and stuff when he gets killed. So he actually has a, you know, I, I don't know, all the secondary characters, like, are the tertiary or whatever characters. All of those little ones that you don't think lead up to something are just as important, I think, to the story as the main characters are. Yeah, I, for me, uh, if I don't count the big two, I definitely like Stephen Lang's portrayal as Ike Clanton. Uh, that guy is a, a booze hound gambler, just coward dirtbag. <laughs> <laughs> like so scummy and what blows me away is like when you look at him in, in tombstone and then you see him over a decade later in avatar he looks way younger and he's like shredded and in this movie he's like this fat pig of a sweaty nasty turd of a person thank you <laughs> uh just like awful anyway um i i appreciate that and i i also uh do like billy bob thornton's uh uh, appearance in the film was Johnny Tyler getting his face slapped around by Wyatt <laughs> in a display of uh, of masculinity and femininity there at the gambling table. So, um, but anyway, um, I did want to ask uh, real quick, uh, Isaac and Jose, um, when, when I watch movies, uh, oftentimes, especially older ones, and I hear, uh, I hear people speak in German, Oftentimes, it's not really German. They're just throwing German words around. And I was wondering if all the dialogue in Spanish was genuine in this film. More of a Jose question. My <laughs> <laughs> Spanish isn't that great. <laughs> it gets the gist of it. It gets the gist of it? Yeah. Okay. I did have to... I did it Like, when I first... I, I didn't... Because um, I was watching it late at night. And so, you know, the, the, the wife is asleep. Like at first I didn't hear what the what the priest was mumbling. Mm. And so like I rewinded, I was like, what the hell did he say? And it turns out he was, yeah, he was saying the whole, oh, like the guy that comes on to pay a horse is the, the death. I was like, oh, okay. And I just oh, kind of kept you, it going. I thought you were going to be like the, that one cowboy that's Mexican, that cruise guy where he's like, <laughs> he's like, oh, he's talking about somebody on a sick horse or something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was just, uh, yeah, it was, um, yeah, like, just stuff like that, but I'm like, oh, they, they, they get, it's, you know, yeah, they, they got it. All right, I, I want to go back through one more time and get everybody's favorite scene, and we'll go back to Mr. The Great to start us off. Favorite scene? Yeah. Um, it's, the, it's the climax of the movie. You think, uh, you think Doc is, is, is down and out? He's, uh. You know, held up at Charlton Heston's pad, looking like death incarnate, with his pale face and covered with sweat. And uh, Wyatt's shitting it, knowing he's going to go get killed by Johnny Ringo. And uh, you, you see Johnny Ringo out there and he's talking crap. He thinks Wyatt's there. And sure enough, it's Doc. And uh, he's just. The huckleberries and the daisies. Oh, you're a daisy if you do. Oh, man. So, so good. So good. It was just such a, uh, so well needed there. Those two to have the final clash. It was, it was great. And uh, that it goes right into pretty much right into Doc's death scene after that. And, uh, but when, uh, it, it's, it's not necessarily to, with that scene, but it's to me, it, it really linked up that uh, Doc says he doesn't have a lot of friends. And uh, was it Texas Jack or whatever? The, the other guy said, oh, yeah, I have tons of friends. I, I don't. So, yeah. you know, it's he does it because because Wyatt's his friend and he's a he's a gunslinger and a, and a scoundrel. He did. He did, he's got but one friend, and it's uh, it's Wyatt. So that's his role dog, and he went to go get go take care of business with him. So that was that was it for me. Would you say he's Isaac. Kubaka and uh, Wyatt's Han Solo? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm killer's taller. I think he's. 
I, I think that Kilmer's uh, his skills as a gun as a gunman are a little bit more on the finesse side, whereas Chewbacca would probably be like a blunt <laughs> blunt force, you know. But uh, rip your arms out, people down. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right, Isaac. What was the question? Favorite favorite scene. <laughs> My favorite scene is the the whole it's gonna be a montage and we're gonna kill all the cowboys. <laughs> it literally starts so you like off the, with you like that the right. scene of the the them riding in the sun and it looks so beautiful and all of a sudden they're just let's kill the cowboys. Anybody <laughs> wearing a red sash is gonna die. We're gonna kill the cowboys. <laughs> but yeah, that's that whole montage leading up to him at the ambush where he stands just he, they're like duck they're like why we need to come up with something quick and he's like no fuck this come on and he just gets right there in the middle of the fucking creek and he's just shooting everybody and not a single person's hitting him and that that's right actually there. uh according according to and the witness testimony of that event that's more or less exactly what happened yeah it's it a boat the, it's in no story. no huh? <laughs> no. Yeah. No. I mean, I don't know about the dialogue part, but the actual shooting, that's how it went down. Jason. You know, it's crazy about that uh that scene where he runs into the river and yells no while he's shooting his gun cuz time actually did slow down just like it showed in the movie. Right? <laughs> there was actually a slow motion shotgun blast. It was awesome. So I'm wow. glad they that detail. Um, this movie really felt like a real, like, real look into what the old West was like, and I appreciated it quite a bit. All right, thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> for but for real, what's your uh, favorite scene? Uh, I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there was a few okay scenes. Um, I, I feel like kind of the, um, I'd say about a third into the movie, it kind of started to get a little bit interesting where they were starting to embed themselves in the, into the uh, um, the gambling house. I liked that. I liked, um, there was a small detail where at the beginning the sheriff was, or I, I guess sheriff was saying that he, you know, he was part of the anti-Chinese, you know, nationalist part or whatever. And then later in the movie, they're eating Chinese food. I thought that was kind of cool um, yeah. to know that, like, you know, that that's like a subtle way of showing, like, a, let's say more liberal ideals without, like, you know, throwing it out there so obviously. Well, um, in interestingly enough, uh, uh, Behan, who is the, the town marshal or town sheriff, rather, he uh, he was a Democrat, and the Earps were Republicans. So take take that for what you will. The the Democrats were part of the bipartisan anti-Chinese league. <laughs> Wild. I don't know, man. That's the his, that's the historical the fact. Movie, so. I I don't know. I I can't really pick out one scene where I was like, oh yeah, that's the stuff right there. So except for the Get slow motion. Let's go ten at the end, boys. <laughs> Jose. That Doc Holiday death, man, <laughs> and everything leading up to it. Um, uh, I'm always going to compare it to something else. And in this case, it was, it was uh, I remember playing Red Dead Redemption, and you, you love that character of uh, John Marsh. And I actually personally really liked uh, Doc. Uh, and just the death was, yeah. Uh, and, and then plus the, the the whole shootout thing, it was like that. That's kind of like what this whole thing was about. Like, um, you got your classic Western shootout. I really enjoyed that first meeting, but the the, the shootout thing was the close was the close second. So, Liz, um, I don't know because Doc, yeah, you Val Kilmer takes all the all the good scenes. In this movie, with the exception of um, when uh, Powers Booth's character, why can't I think of his name again? Curly oh, Curly Bill. Bill. When Curly Bell shoots the, is it the sheriff or the, mm -hmm. yeah. And 
Kurt Russell has to go out there and Ike Clanton comes up and is like, okay, we're going to rush him. Let's just get him. It's just one guy. And uh, he's like, yeah, you might get me, but I'm going to not before I turn your head into a canoe type situation. <laughs> he's just staring him down the whole time. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's just the dialogue and they just filmed it to where he looks so badass when he did that. And then Doc, of course, see, then Doc steals the show when he comes out and he's like, you know, I'm just going to shoot you too. And he goes, you're so drunk, you're, you're probably seeing two of me. He's like, that's okay, I got a gun for each of you. <laughs> so, I mean, that, I mean, I don't know if it's the scenes necessarily or just how they're able to, like, portray the dialogue in this one. There's a lot but, of great one-liners. Yeah, I mean, the, the whole, like, oh, are we cross? <laughs> I can't, you know, and... Let's have a no. spelling contest. This is another one, but all the good lines are from the are from Doc Holliday. Yeah. So no, when he tells know. him, it's like, oh, I I met every rich man I know has a guilty conscience. He's like, oh, I already have a guilty conscience. Might as well have the money too. Right. <laughs> so. Yeah. I think uh, the end of the sequence with uh, Johnny Tyler when he comes back with the shotgun. And he's gonna blow blast uh, Wyatt <laughs> off the face of the earth, <laughs> and then uh, then. Uh, Doc comes out and goes, Johnny Tyler, you rascal! <laughs> and he just stops dead in his tracks. And then they just, then uh, Doc and the Herbs have a conversation. They just totally forget about him. He's just standing there with that shotgun in his hand. And then he's like, oh, you can go now, but leave the shotgun. No, Herb tells him to leave the Oh, that's the right. Shotgun. Leave the shotgun. Like, he like, hey, Doc, he's like, hey, you still hey, there? You. <laughs> I forgot about he's you. Like, he puts the shotgun down and he says, thank you. So yeah. <laughs> Oh man! But again, I, I don't know. It's a good so, scene, but it's all with the. It's just their way that we do the dialogue. It should before, just be a radio show. Before we get to the buckets, I'm just curious, real quick, uh, because historically speaking, there's a big division amongst historians about whether or not the herbs are the good guys or the bad guys in the story. And I know that the film has a, a slant that it portrays, but I think it does a good job in portraying the herbs, at least in a mildly morally complicated sense. Do you guys, does anybody have any thoughts on uh, whether or not the Earps are really the instigators in all of this? Okay then. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, Nate, buckets. All right, so I, I've been thinking about the buckets, not just for this movie, but buckets, period. And, uh, you know, I think this has the, the, it has, it has the acting in it. It's got the cultural relevance. Um, I think it was it was entertaining. It was fun to watch, but as Lego touched on, the, the directing was was it was it was kind of disjointed. And you can tell that it wasn't one person's vision. It was kind of hopping across several things. So, uh, you know, in, in in staying true to the theme of the show, I'm going to give it a nine. Hmm. Isaac. I'm giving it 10 buckets. I like this movie a lot. And anytime I see it, I get I get excited. I watch it and uh, I enjoy it all the way through. And it makes me want to do some opium after I'm done, too. <laughs> Fair enough. In Fair liquid enough. form, though, like that crackhead. <laughs> Jason. Uh, so I'm I've been called out for giving out 10s little bit here lately um and i i was also thinking about the buckets recently um i think when i when i go to judge these movies a lot of times what i'm what i'm looking for in them is how well did they accomplish the goal that they set out to do you know were they trying to be an entertaining slasher you know i'm going to judge that differently than were they trying to be indiana jones and uh i think this movie failed to do what it set out to do, 100%. Um, it, to me, it wasn't entertaining. Uh, they managed to make Kurt Russell action scenes boring. Uh, I just, I was very unentertained. I was very not engaged. They, they threw all three brothers at us and were like, look at these guys you have to care about now. And I was like, okay. I don't care about them. I can't tell the difference between them. Their wives all look the same. And then they go and get rid of half of them. And it's like, well, freak, man, what am I? Let's just replace them with these two fucking note guys that we we sort of introduced in the beginning of the movie that I forgot were even in the movie. 
And I, now I'm supposed to care about these guys fighting the big bad guys. And then let's change up the big bad guys too. How many times? Like, fuck, dude, this thing was a mess. And uh, I'm ranting, but I'm going to go ahead and give this one a solid two buckets. Fuck this movie. Two buckets. <laughs> There are movies that make him. <laughs> I swear. Jose? <laughs> Hell. Is he there? Yeah, man, this is an eight movie bucket. Um, <laughs> I enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. I thought um, if a award season was coming around, certain people should have been given an award for some of their uh, portrayals in here. Not everyone, but some of them. Um, but I am kind of with Lego on the fact that uh, I didn't realize that there was multiple directors, but it did kind of seem a little choppy. Um, and I was like, okay, I was like, that was interesting. Like it had its artsy moments, and then it had its what the f like, what was that moment? But now thinking back, like Lego pointed it out, yeah, you, they did kind of switch a lot of sh stuff on us. They did it so subtly, though, I didn't even catch that until you said it. So, um, but anyways, uh, it's not an epic, at least in my opinion. It is a good, uh, 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 you know, if, if you're saying it's a good historical account of what happened, that's pretty cool. I think that's important. Uh, me and the guys like history. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I don't think it's, at least by any means, I, I mean, I, I, it's a Western, but I don't see it's super huge influence uh, going forward. So, uh, but it's still not a bad movie. It's still one of the ones I would recommend and say, yeah, this one's a cool one. You guys should watch it. So uh, eight buckets for me. Yeah. I mean, I do like the movie. I'll watch it over and over again. Um, have to and between you and my dad. I constantly have to watch it. And then I have to hear all about the historical relevance because of you and dad. So I know all the history behind this play. <laughs> so, you know, it was a good documentary for what? <laughs> it was an entertaining documentary. Docudrama. Um, not docudrama. There you go. Um, I mean, I thought it was the, it was well acted. The story was pretty much true to his history. Um, yeah, the, the director part, like I knew there were multiple directors, but maybe I'm just not as in tune with seeing who did what, except for the very beginning it does look very different than the rest of the movie. And I, you know, I just chalked it up to like, well, they're just setting up how bad these bad guys really are in comparison to how bad the Earps really are. <laughs> they're not as bad <laughs> type situation. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's a fun movie. I, I gave it like an eight. And it's entertaining, it's, yeah, but with the directing and with the, mm -hmm. the, I guess, moving forward, I mean, people watch it, I think, because I think people watch this movie because of Michael Bain and because of, and because of Val Kilmer. The rest, I don't think anybody gives two craps about. <laughs> they just want to see, if you just, they do the, like that Jar Jar Binks movie thing with Star Wars where they just chop out all the Jar Jar Binks parts. If you chop out everything except for Val Kilmer and Michael Bain in this movie, I think the movie would be fantastic. <laughs> and there it is, folks, the first comparison of Wyatt Earp with Jar Jar Binks. Um. But still, I'll, I'll, again, I have to, I, I still like it, enjoy it. But, uh, I give it eight. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Um, well, I mean, I, I think it goes without saying that I think that the that the story was good, the acting is good, it's fun to watch. Um, I think I think given that it went through so many directors' hands, I feel still think it's remarkably consistent, at least after you get past the initial wedding scene. Um, but I, I agree with what Nate said that I'm not sure how much forward influence this had on future films it's not like the spaghetti westerns of old that kind of set the stage for these things but rather it's this is like drawing off of that legacy but because it's historically accurate i'm going to give it one bonus point so i'm going to give it nine bucks so we hope you guys joined us in watching tombstone this last week with us and uh, we would be interested to hear what your comments are on the film how you enjoyed it uh, we had some interesting comments uh, for uh, Silverado from last week, which we were fantastic. 
Um, so I'm passing the baton for next week's movie pick on to Jose, as is our tradition. Jose, do you uh, want to let us know what uh, what your pick is? We are going to be watching The Big Hit. The Big Hit. Funky Marky Wahlberg? Yep. Mm. Okay. I don't think I've seen that. I, don't I forgot what year. Either. I'll get yeah, you guys on it. it. Yeah. It's, uh, what is it? Lou Diamond Phillips. Uh, oh, we have, you've seen it. You have seen it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you've seen it. Yeah. So I'm excited to see what you guys think of it. 1998. There you go. Christina Applegate. There's like a kidnapping or something. Yep. So right. tune in next week, look folks. Forward. Yeah. Look forward to watching the big hit <laughs> and uh, trying to remember having seen it before. <laughs> and so until next week, guys, <laughs> we'll, we uh, will welcome you to join us again. And for late to the party, we're signing off. <laughs>